Hi guys, it's Andrea from A Doctor in the House. I am so sorry I haven't made a video in ages. Um, this month and last month have been crazy. I graduated medical school, so I am now officially a doctor. I'm an MD. So I graduated medical school, I got married, I moved to Minnesota, we went on our honeymoon, and so now I'm here in Minnesota, I'm starting my residency at the Mayo Clinic on Monday, today's Thursday, so uh, really soon, I'm really nervous, and anyways, that's what's going on in life, just like running around doing crazy errands, getting everything ready to start officially internship and residency so life is good and today I want to make a video about studying I've made another video about studying before which you should check out it's just called how to study part of my channel um, but I'm gonna go a little more in depth because I'm getting lots of emails and lots of questions about how I study um, specifically in medical school and things that have worked for me so really these are only things that have worked for me if it doesn't work for you, I won't be offended. Don't listen to anything I have to say. Uh, this is just my specific advice. And um, I have lots more about other things that I've used to study on my blog, so feel free to check that out. It's adoctorinthouse.com with dashes, uh, and I'll have the link in my bio. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about uh, with studying is the difference between passive and active studying. And this is just something that I think, I've never like officially read this documented somewhere, but I consider there to be two very different types of studying. So passive studying to me is anything where you're just not completely engaged. So something where you're just like sitting and reading, um, I think like looking at flashcards for me is kind of passive, but uh, really just sitting and reading and trying to take in information, look, listening to a lecture, that's kind of passive. Um, and to me, those just aren't high yield ways to learn. And in med school and in college when you're taking hard classes, you want to learn the most amount in the shortest amount of time. You want to like jam everything into your brain as quickly as possible. So passive studying uh, is just kind of worthless. Um, and then there's active studying. I'm sorry, it's not worthless, but you know what I mean. So then active studying is where you're really taxing your brain and where you're really doing all the learning, I think. So active studying would be like quizzing yourself, taking practice tests, doing practice questions, um, being like up at the whiteboard trying to copy a diagram and then erase it and then write it again. Um, Anything like that where you're really engaged, so uh, teaching your friends, reviewing your notes, or trying to explain something to your friends, trying to say it from memory and explain what's going on, all of those are really active forms of studying. And to me, that's what really makes information stick. If I can actively study something, I learn it so much better than if I'm just reading it in a book, which I could read 10 pages and then have no idea what I just read. And so that's just not worth my time, really. So, um, unfortunately, there's a little bit of passive studying that I have to do to kind of prepare for my active studyingness. Um, so I'm going to tell you what I do to prepare to actively study. So one thing I do is I make note sheets, and I kind of talked about this in my last video, and I get lots of questions about my note sheets. So what I do is I take a lecture, so that could be a PowerPoint presentation. In med school, it's generally a PowerPoint, um, but any like one-hour lecture, and I try to condense it down into one page of notes. So sometimes lectures are really dense, and there's just no way you can get it in one page. But really the point is to try to condense it as much as possible into um, a digestible page of notes that makes a lot more sense than just flipping through slides in a PowerPoint. So I'll write down anything from that lecture that I think is really important, things I think I don't know. If there's really obvious things that I know, I won't waste my time writing that down because I know that I know it. Um, but I try to make it organized and easy to go through. So I have a couple examples here. Um, I either do it from lectures or sometimes I'll make book chapter page reviews. So here's one that I made. These are all really old. But this is from the Neuroanatomy BRS, which is a review book that I used in medical school. And this is chapter two. So what I'll do is I'll have like a topic over here. It says meninges. And then I just kind of write like the summary items that I think are important. 
Um, and so if you see, this page is like very organized. And what I'll do is the first time I make a page of notes, I'll just write down the most important things, like what I think I must, must know. And then later on, like a week later, if I feel like I really have that mastered and it's a few days before the test, I'll go in and add in extra details. So here you can see there's two different colors. This navy, this blue text is stuff I've added in later. Um, or like little notes I've taken on the notes. So it doesn't have to be everything. You can always go in and add more, but try to get the meat of the lecture condensed down so that it's not as overwhelming. And I have like a million of these sheets. I mean, for everything. So, oh, here's a good example. This says, this says, BRS chapter five continued. This is all backwards, it's hard to say. See, continued right there. So that means that I couldn't fit all of chapter five on one page. So this is the second page of that. Um, and that's totally, totally fine. And do it, you know, whatever works for you. This is what works for me. Once I have these papers though, this is what I use to study at the whiteboard. So I'll go up to the whiteboard and I'll just copy these pages on the whiteboard over and over again. And I'll erase stuff and try to fill it back in. And um, I'll step back and kind of read it and then erase it all and write it again. And I write it over and over and over on the whiteboard until I feel like I have everything on this sheet in my head. And then I'll go back to the PowerPoint and like add in more little details or whatever. But that's one big thing I do is these note sheets. The next thing I do is I make question sheets. Um, and it's kind of like flashcards, but for some reason flashcards just don't work for me. Um, but it's the same concept. So what I do is I take a piece of paper and I fold it um, hot dog wise. Do you guys say that? Like this way is hamburger and this way is hot dog. Am I the only one that says that? Okay, never mind. Anyway, take a piece of paper and fold it like that. And then take your notes and convert them into a question form. So every sentence, just convert it into a question and write down literally all of your notes in question answer format. <clears throat> so for example, this is <clears throat> first aid which is a book that you'll use in medical school. This is the reproductive chapter. And literally, I'll just write the entire first aid chapter in question form. So it'll say like um, the um, ovarian or, sorry, I, I don't know what I'm, I'm trying to read this backwards. So whatever it says in a sentence, I'll just convert it into a question. So here it says, what vein does the left ovary and testes drain to? And so on the back, I'll say that it's the gonadal vein. Um, and then that's where it's going, then to the renal, then to the IVC. So basically, it's just everything question on one side and every single answer on the other side. And you're the only one who's going to read these, and so it only has to make sense to you. It doesn't have to make sense to everybody else. And I'll do it on the other side, too, just to save paper, because I make a million of these. But these are so nice, because if you write your entire note, your entire PowerPoint, or your entire book chapter in question and answer format, and then you know the answer to all of these questions, you know the entire chapter, or you know the entire lecture. You know it all. And so um, you'll get 100 on your test. So if you ever want to get 100, this is the way to do it. Because if you know all these things and you've written everything down, then it's all in your head. Um, and then you have these forever. And it's really nice when you want to study for finals or something like that. You can just grab this again and um, go through it all again. So I have, I mean, I have so many of these. This is just what I found when I was cleaning stuff out. But I bet I have thousands and thousands of these. I go through like reams, reams of paper. Isn't it beautiful? I should have thrown this all out. I threw away a lot of it, but I guess I haven't thrown away everything yet. Okay, so those are some of the big things I do um, as far as my preparation study. And then actively studying, it's all up at the whiteboard for me um, or going over those question and answer sheets. But write it down on the whiteboard, erase it, try to write it again. And then other things that are active for me, I really like practice questions. I do tons of practice questions. Um, don't look at the answers, like really quiz yourself, because if you're just reading the answers after you do the question, that's passive. You really want to tax your brain, um, because that's when you're going to learn. And if you get frustrated, sometimes it's really frustrating doing practice questions because you miss them all, and I totally get that. So this is what you tell yourself. I tell myself this all the time, especially when I was studying for the MCAT. Tell yourself it's so much better to get a question wrong than it is to get it right. 
because if you get it wrong, then you'll remember it because you missed it. And so you'll read it, and then the next time you get a question like that, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I got this wrong last time, and you'll remember it. Whereas if you just got it right by, like, luck, maybe you guessed right or something, um, you'll read over the answer and be like, oh, yeah, 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 I got that right. And then you don't remember it as well, really. So it's better to get stuff wrong. I promise. Tell yourself that. It'll make, at least it makes me feel better. So it'll probably make you feel better, too. At least I hope. So that's one thing. And then um, the other thing that I tell myself that really helps with studying, and you should tell yourself this too, is that we are capable of learning anything. I tell myself, I am capable of learning anything. There's nothing that I can't learn. It might take me a couple days to get it, but there's nothing that I can't learn, and there's nothing that you can't learn. And I know you've had that class where you just don't get it and you're frustrated and you're sitting in lecture and nothing makes sense and then like a week later you have that light bulb moment where you're like, oh my gosh, I totally get it, it finally makes sense. That used to happen to me in chemistry all the time. I would sit in lecture and like want to cry and then three days later it's so simple and then you always know how to do it. So just tell yourself, I might not understand it today, it might take me three days but there's nothing that I can't learn. Um, and, and it's true. You might just really have to work at it, but you can get it all in your head. I promise. So uh, study actively, learn it all, and you're going to do great. Hope this helps. Bye.